Hello and welcome to this video from Client Engager. In this video, I'm going to look at the importing function in Client Engager, which we can use to import all of our clients when we first start using Client Engager. I'm going to go over some top tips and key areas to focus on when you do this. So let's jump into Client Engager and have a look at our importing tool. Hello, welcome to this video from Client Engager. I'm looking at the importing tool today. I'm not gonna import data because we've already got data in our demo account. But what I'm gonna show you is the import sheet and how to fill it out best as possible, how to import that data, and the key things to be aware of when you're filling out that sheet. So let's have a look at what the import function can do. Okay, here we are in our Client Engager. I'm gonna to go to settings. I'm going to go to import clients. So this tool can be used when you're importing clients into Client Engager when you first set it up. We've got what we have to do is we have to download our import sheet, fill that import sheet out, and then re-upload it. So I'm going to download that. Okay, so here we've got our import sheet. First of all, you notice along the bottom we've got different tabs for different companies types. And there's some demo data in here already for us. If we've got custom IDs already associated to our customers, we can put those in here if we want to. If we don't have any, we don't need them. We then put the name of the company, the company number, the engagement date, the business start date, the address of the company. If there's a registered address and a trading address, you can list them both separately. Then you can put the primary contact. Now a key bit of information to remember here is, if you've entered a contact here, you do not need to enter them as an individual or sole trader as well, because you're already creating that record via the limited company tab. So if William Smith was also going to be someone that would get a self-assessment tax return, then you wouldn't enlist them as both a contact here and an individual, because you're going to duplicate records by doing that. So we keep going and we put the email address in here as well. And then you'll get notice you can add company's house, authentication codes, corporate UTR numbers, VAT number and PayYE references. So that's gonna import a lot of your tax reference data for you as well. So really the only thing to really remember here is if William Smith is also gonna have a self-assessment tax return, do not add him onto the individual tab because you'll be duplicating him. So you only need to add him once. So once you've added your limited companies, you can go through and do the same thing for individuals and sole traders. And again, if you haven't got information such as a trading address and the home address, don't worry too much about that. That's not a huge issue. But you go through and once again, at the end, you've got the ability to add personal UTR numbers, national insurance, tax, etc. You then do the same principle with partnerships. Now with partnerships again, if you're adding a primary contact, remember not to then add them as an individual. If however, you've got, like you would with a partnership, more than two, more than one contact and you want to add the secondary contacts, you would add them as individuals or sole traders onto this list, or you'd wait to add those second people until you've gone into Client Engager, you've uploaded this sheet and then you've added them. Then you've got limited liability partnerships, charities and trusts, and it's all the same principle. So really, it is just a case of exporting the data out of your current system, copying and pasting the data that you can put into our spreadsheet into our spreadsheet. But do remember, if you list a primary contact, do not put them anywhere else because you'll start duplicating records and you have to go through and delete things. And then importing is dead simple. I'll take you through it now. Okay, so once you've in, once you've completed completely filled out that sheet, you need to then inform Client Engager of whether you're going to be importing our active clients, archived clients, or prospects. So you fill this sheet out and technically three times. You can have one sheet with your prospects, one sheet with your active clients, one sheet with your archived clients if you're bringing that historic information into Client Engager. You then select the file you're looking at.
and then you'd click upload. It's now reviewing this data and it's reviewing everything that you've put in here for all the different companies, etc. Then you would click save. I'm not going to save this data because we've already got data in Client Engager, so I don't want to run the risk of corrupting any historic information. So that's as simple as it is for importing data. Create free versions of the spreadsheet. Active, prospects and archived. If you don't want to import all that archived information, you don't have to. Just do active and prospects. Once you've got that information ready on your spreadsheet and you've filled out as much as possible, import it. Remember, once you've imported this information, you can't re-import it and override it. So it's important you get as much information into this spreadsheet as possible for the first and only import that you can do. One of the things we're often asked about once we've imported our information is what are the next things we should look at doing? Once you've got your client data in there, it's really important to go through and build out your services, the phases and your checklists before you then go adding all those services to your clients. Once you've then added all those services to your clients, it's important to then go through and price all your clients, making sure your pricing matrix is all correct. Once you've done all of that, you can then start inviting your clients into the portal. If you've got loads of historic files and documents that you want to import into Client Engager, that's dead quick and simple. Go into the folder you want to import those documents into, click upload, drag and drop everything into that box, and then it will upload within minutes, if not seconds. We've got a really quick upload tool, so it shouldn't take too much effort to import lots of historic information. So that's our import tool. Hopefully that's been helpful and giving you some top tips to bear in mind while you're using that import tool. But the main two tips are, one, once you've imported a client's data, you can't re-import it. So make sure you've got that sheet completely populated with accurate information first time round. Two, if you've listed someone as a primary contact somewhere, you don't want to list them anywhere else again, because then you'll start creating duplicates. You're better off importing one primary contact and then linking that primary contact to all the different businesses they're involved in once the data is in, in Client Engager. I hope that video has been helpful. I look forward to speaking to you very soon.